I can tell you how I managed to inspire the guys to uh, win the Premiership um, title in 2012. He was captain for the day against the European giants at Toulon and the camera was on him, the pressure was on him. Chris Robshaw uh, obviously knew it was all part of the plan, pulled out of the game halfway through the week, so I had to captain the side and to raise morale and boost the lads. Uh, I managed to slip on my ass. Very good away record, and yo, George Robson, the first error of the night, very slippery on those. I was actually at home watching it on TV, and he slips over, he, he's ready to come out and lead the boys out. Genuinely the funniest thing I've seen as a rugby player. Um, myself and George Lowe were on the bench that day, and we honestly couldn't stop laughing for a good 10, 12 minutes. Comes out of the changing rooms, looking all tough, and then he absolutely stacks it on the marble floor of the too long ground. He was like Bambi on ice coming out of the changing room and took a fall. <laughs> the first game as captain and he's done that, it was, it was brilliant. Subsequently spent the rest of the year getting an absolute peppering from everybody. Uh, just, just, just constant abuse about it. We had t-shirts made up everything <laughs> with his fall. He came out and just decked it. I have to take full credit for spurring us on to then go on to win the Premiership title. So I'm sure without that, the morale wouldn't have been anywhere near where it needed to be with us winning every week. You have some hilarious moments when you think back of what he did and uh, like, to actually see him go into the middle of a bath huddle before a line-out um, to discuss their call with them. I mean, he must have been one of the most annoying people to go on a pitch and they're all looking around and going, what is he doing in with us? <laughs> But that's what he did. He just got in their face all the time. He loved it. He loved them people telling him to go and take a jump. When there's a big fight kicking off, he's, he's in the camera with his finger. I think he's dislocating and he's pointing like that. I'll never forget that. He gets in people's faces. He, he annoys them, the, the opposition. He intimidates them. Um, people to play against him say they can't stand him, which I think is a good trait to have. Um, you want to be a player like that. George, for me, has brought that nitty gritty side. Um, He's not afraid to mix it up, he's not afraid to rub people the wrong way, but you, you know what you see is what you get. He'll always give you his best. In the best and the worst possible way, I think he's the biggest nose you'll ever meet. He'd nosed off the opposition to the point where they wanted to kill him. He's the biggest nose in the world, and I mean that in the nicest way possible, because you need to have those guys on your side. Yeah, he's a character in his own right, certainly a not nausea amongst the fellas. He used to win an award every year at our end of season social. Um, and it was the very last award of the, you know, the court session, if you like. I will not um, divulge what that award is. He can tell any fans or whoever's watching this what it is, and he won it outright every single year. His preparation, uh, as I said, uh, you know, his, his meticulous going over of lineouts, uh, making sure that everyone knows their job, making sure everyone uh, knows what the calls are. Unbelievably detailed professionalism and, um, and preparation. I think he'll go down as one of the one of the great, you know, second rowers that's played for this club. He has not just competed, but excelled. He brought an intelligence to the game. He was never the biggest, he was never the strongest, he was never the fastest, but he thought the fastest. He's carved out a very, very successful career in the second row, and long may it continue, obviously, in France, where, you know, they treasure the sort of front five battles, and I think he'll enjoy it there as well. I think his missus dresses him, but uh, he's always one for designer clothes. He's always quite smart, suave, sophisticated, plays the piano, um, bit of art, yeah, he, um, he's got a lot more, more to him than meets the eye. He's a fine player and wish him all the best and you know, thanks for uh, being a part of Quinn's. Great bunch of guys who I'd, I'd, I'd count as friends and, uh, for, a lot, for a long time to come. He's one of those guys that he's going to be missed and it's going to be a, a quieter place next year without him in the changing room. I'm definitely going to miss a lot, lot of things at the club, a lot of people and the relationships that I've, I've developed here over however many years. And uh, obviously John Kingston, there's a fond place in my heart for you if you're watching. Uh, and I really miss you, mate. He did offer a lot um, for Quinns at his time. And I'm sure he'll offer a lot to Oyenax, um out in France and, and they'll love him. It's been a fantastic uh, 10 years and, and enjoyed every minute of it. In a very nice way, when I say that, not in a nasty way, but in a really, he was just that competitive animal uh, that you could really appreciate. We'll miss him.